from Mobile, Alabama. It's the America's Junior Miss pageant, featuring 50 of the most outstanding young women in the nation. Hi, I'm Sarah Jane Everman, America's Junior Miss 1999. And I'm backstage with 50 very talented, but also very nervous young women. title of America's Junior Miss 2000. We have got some great happening music for you. Four young men who are absolutely fabulous singers from Ireland. My town are with us and one of country music's hottest new performers, Andy Griggs. But first, let's find out about these fabulous young ladies. Sarah Jane, take it away.
Kaczynski from Wayne, Illinois, and the Illinois is pronounced without the S, you all. Hi, I'm Crystal Kama from the great Hoosier State of Indiana, home of the Indy 500. Now we're heading into Cajun country. Let's say bon Tom Relay, let the good times roll. From Winfield, Louisiana, I'm Kendall Cole. Hey, you guys, I'm Angela Roy from the state of Maine. I'd like to say hi to all my wonderful family and my friends back home. wrote a song about. I'm Crystal Law from Westwood, Massachusetts. I'm Sarah Tarouche from Michigan, the Great Lakes State and home of Motown. Hi, I'm Heather Koskovich from Fairmont, Minnesota, the beautiful land of 10,000 lakes. Good evening from the Magnolia State of Mississippi, known for its southern hospitality, I am Christy Football. Hello, I'm Beth 
beautiful Washington State, where there's a coffee stand on every corner. <laughs> Representing the four teams country of the East, I'm Steve Arbizzi from the Wild Waffle State of West Virginia. Woo! <laughs> hey, I'm Allison Lauber from Franklin, Wisconsin. I want to say hi to Mike and everyone else who came down from the Dairy State. A state with enough wide open spaces for all the chicks in the world. There they are, that's the future of America. And they're coming right back. America's Junior Miss Pageant is brought to you by HealthSouth, the healthcare company of the 21st century, by the Economic Development Partnership of Alabama, and by Finesse. America's Junior Miss pageant now in its 43rd year. Since Junior Miss began, over $80 million has been given away. And this year, through the state, local, and national levels of competition, a total of $1.5 million has been made available in scholarship money. Now, what you're watching tonight actually started months ago with 6,000 high school girls across the country. Now we're down to the final 50, the best of the best, who've won the right to be here for tonight's finals. How are these girls feeling? Well, as you can see, they are really excited. They are also really nervous. They are really glad to be here. And most of all, they are really, really hoping they don't make fools of themselves. Now, you ask, how do I know this? Well, when I was a high school senior, I was right here on this stage representing Georgia. Now, I bombed. <laughs> I bombed big time here in Mobile, but I have to say that being at the Junior Miss pageant opened the door to the career that I've got today. And that's really what Junior Miss is all about, opening doors for these young ladies and today recognizing our leaders of tomorrow. Our judges have been taking a look at these girls during preliminary competitions. They have interviewed each one of these young ladies one-on-one, -on -one, and their scores for interview, along with their scores in talent, fitness, Poise and Scholastics have been tabulated by the accounting firm of Crow, Shields, and Bailey. The young ladies with the top eight scores then move on to the finals for America's Junior Miss 2000. And here they are. In no particular order, the finalists for America's Junior Miss 2000 are New Hampshire's Junior Miss, Julie Bluma. Our second finalist for America's Junior Miss 2000, Mississippi's Junior Miss, Christy Iron. <laughs> finalist number three, number three, Maryland's Junior Miss, Sarah Brock. for Junior Miss 2000, Alabama's Junior Miss, Katie Boyd! Our next finalist, Wisconsin's Junior Miss, Allison Lauber! Come on, Wisconsin. Our next contestant and finalist for America's Junior Miss 2000, South Carolina's Junior Miss, Laura Bazaar. Six finalists, two to go. Arizona's Junior Miss, Adrian Emery. Finalist, 
Utah's junior miss, Jessica Henderson. girls have been here in Mobile competing in the preliminaries. It's been a lot of hard work and a little play. Or was that a little work and a lot of play? We had a camera crew follow us around and keep a close eye on what we've been up to. Let's take a look. Antebellum dresses and southern charm, our first impression is a lasting one. Even the food is a little different this far south. Fruits are so good. There's lots of work to be done. We learned three dance routines in less than two days. We get a chance to cool down at the Coca-Cola Beach Party in Gulf Shores. You can't visit the Gulf Coast without trying a local favorite. Winsel's Oyster House serves up its specialty on the half shell. Even though we have to dance at practice, it doesn't stop us from dancing the night away at several parties in our honor. We all have blind dates for the Junior Miss Prom. We throw in some fun with the Mobile Bay Bears. Some of the memories being made actually started off as a dream. We roll out the red carpet for Nebraska's junior miss, Lindsay Wilkerson. <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful. She can't believe it when she arrives for a night at the Oscars. It's a sure sign she has won the Hostess Award. Each junior miss was asked to plan out a slumber party, right down to the very last detail. It's perfect. I mean, the red carpet, down to the silverware. It's perfect. Lindsay's innovative idea earned her a $5,000 scholarship, courtesy of Upsy Daisy Sleepwear. The company also donated the PJs and all the extras. Those who have lived the Junior Miss experience like to give back to the program. Fashion designer Angela Moore motivates all of us to discover our own style. While our time is limited, we do get a little sightseeing in. And we build lifelong friendships we will never forget. I'm so glad I have 49 new sisters. Here are two young women who know all about the rigors of competition and the rewards, too. Tyrenda Williams won the America's Junior Miss title in 1997, and Andrea Plummer took home the title the year before in 96. Hey, Ty, how much scholarship money did you win at the various local, state, and national levels? Well, at all three levels of Junior Miss competition, I accumulated over $80,000 in cash tuition scholarship. You know, and as a rising senior at Birmingham Southern College, I've learned that debt-free life is a good thing. <laughs> good answer. Hey, Andrea, what do you think it takes to win the title of America's Junior Miss? I think it takes a strong belief in yourself, dedication in all that you do, and a lot of determination. You're right. Now, for all of you keeping score at home, this is how points are allocated in the five categories to be judged. The scoring is broken down like this. Scholastic achievement based on each girl's academic performance throughout the year is worth 20%. Fitness accounts for 15%. Poise consists of each girl's confidence on stage and her impromptu speaking ability and accounts for 15%. Talent is 25%. And the interview with the judges, which took place earlier in the week, accounts for 25%. So the three elements of the judging we will see tonight are poise, fitness, and talent. 
All right, Deborah, back to you. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Now let's meet the judges whose decisions will have a dramatic effect on the lives of the young ladies here tonight. First of all, the founder and president of Upsy Daisy Sleepwear, Leslie Scrushy. <laughs> Internationally known choreographer, director, and producer, Mark Anthony Thomas. She was America's Junior Miss in 1992, now a practicing attorney. Please welcome Tiffany Stoker Madsen. He's a Broadway producer, currently working on Disney's The Lion King, Jeff Lee. And she's a choreographer for the U.S. gymnastics team, Nancy Roach. Well, now you know who holds the key for choosing tonight's winner. Whom will they choose? We'll move closer to the answer as the search for America's Junior Miss 2000 continues. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jane Smith, live backstage at the 43rd Annual America's Junior Miss program, where 50 of the brightest and most talented young ladies are competing for thousands of dollars in scholarship money. There's a lot at stake. In fact, the, tonight's winner will take home $50,000 in scholarship money. As we just heard, the women are judged on their scho scholastic achievement, their talent, their interview, and their poise. Of course, Fox 10 will have tonight's winner live following tonight's program. Stay tuned. Thousands of school kids. Miss Sarah Jane Everman. As America's Junior Miss, I joined this sports spectacular on the road to encourage young people everywhere to remember the Health South message. Whatever you do, go for it. And these girls are going to go for it now. The America's Junior Miss competition is aimed at finding the best all-round girl, and that's why fitness is a part of tonight's competition. This segment accounts for 15% of each girl's total score at the end of the evening. And folks, this is not your typical workout routine. So get your scorecards ready, because here is our fitness competition.
the fitness routine that's also an endurance contest. These girls are incredible, but there is a whole nother side to these ladies that you won't see here on the stage. But being teenagers, they love to talk about it. I love peanut butter. I have some days been had such a craving for peanut butter that I've eaten a couple of jars with milk and bread, of course. I'm half Japanese, and no one can ever tell it. Um, my mom's full Japanese. She lives in Japan and everything. I was bald until I was five years old. My deepest secret is I practice being blind a lot. I'll walk around my house with my eyes shut and make sure that if anything ever happened, I lost my eyes, that I'd be able to get around. I am a daredevil. I burp, and I burp really loudly, and it's not a joke. I mean, I can say half the alphabet, I can say sentences, I can sing songs. If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. <laughs> to tell you about some special awards that were chosen during earlier competition. The Style Award and $5,000 is being given to Oklahoma's Junior Miss Tracy Addington, who gave the best presentation of her own personality and style. The America's Junior Miss Council Be Your Best Self Award with $1,500 in scholarship money was given to Mississippi's Junior Miss Christy Irons. The Springdale Mall Community Service Award and $1,000 was won by Massachusetts Junior Miss Crystal Law. And a former junior miss, Allison Kellogg, won $1,000 from SAD Development for her outstanding freshman year in college. Now, Deborah's going to tell you about one of the hottest new groups in pop music. Thanks, Sarah Jane, and they really are hot. They're from Ireland, but they are about to take this country by storm with their first U.S. tour. Here with their new single, Lifetime Affair, please welcome My Town.
America's Junior Mispatch is brought to you by HealthSide, the healthcare company of the 21st century, and by the Economic Development Partnership of Alabama. I don't think it's any different than peer pressure to do drugs or anything. Right. Like. It's just that sex is a topic that not a lot of people discuss. Exactly. It's something that <laughs> that's not the problem nowadays. Yeah. We need to be more open right. about sex. And, and that's how that feels about it. We have, to, we have to be open about there. saying it's okay to not. You have to have to be open after someone's made the mistake to tell right. them yeah. that, you know, we can start over. You don't over. have to. You can always start over. On my 13th birthday, my dad and I went out together and bought this ring. It's called a promise ring. And we decided together that this was going to be our, our kind of pact, I guess, that I would remain a virgin until my wedding night. You know, you have to have all the right reasons to do it because, you know, some people believe that they're ready, but most of the time they're really not because they don't, they don't realize the consequences they don't, well, that they don't they're understand. Doing. Now it's time for the talent segment of the program, which accounts for 25% of each finalist's total score. These talented girls have been practicing for years leading up to tonight, but they have only 90 seconds to shine before our judges and the millions of viewers at home. Tonight, you'll be hearing each girl talk about her talent, and we'll start off with finalist number one, New Hampshire's junior miss, Julie Bluma. I have definitely been a classical ballerina all of my life, but that's why this is a new style for me. The reason I chose The Matrix is because I just have so much fun when I get on stage and I can do this and it's, it's a performing number but it, it's very challenging as well so it's good for everyone to see. And dancing to The Matrix, here is New Hampshire's Junior Miss, Julie Bluma. Yeah. Now here's contestant number two, Mississippi's junior miss, Christy Irons. For my talent, I'll be singing an upbeat version of Frank Sinatra's That's Life. And it's really a fun song to sing because it has such an optimistic message. And no matter what life throws at you, it teaches you that you can bounce right back and pick up where you left off. And so it's a lot of fun to sing. And singing That's Life, here is Mississippi's junior miss, Christy Irons. Oh, <laughs> 
and that is Mississippi's junior miss, Christy Irons. Now here's contestant number three, Maryland's junior miss, Sarah Roth. Every day about ballet, you learn something new. There's always something to improve on. It's a constant process. You're never, you never reach a point where you're, I'm the perfect ballerina. You only aspire to be that. And performing Tom Duvall's from Swan Lake, here is Maryland's junior miss, Sarah Roth. <laughs> Three down, five to go, and if you're already having trouble picking your favorite, just imagine how our judges must be feeling. It's not an easy job, is it, judges? We've got five more outstanding performances coming up, so stay right there. America's Junior Miss Pageant is brought to you by Bush Beans, new maple-cured bacon baked beans. Try them today. And by Finesse. When I was Junior Miss a million years ago here, my talent was sewing. Needless to say, I didn't make it to the finals because, frankly, it just didn't compare to the girl who was singing an aria from La Boheme. It does take a lot of confidence to walk out on this stage, whether your talent is sewing or something else. It takes a lot of confidence to come out here. And for our next three finalists, confidence is something they have in great supply. Our fourth finalist this evening is Alabama's Junior Miss, Katie Boyd. I have been dancing since I was 18 months old, and I love it. Also, I've got to travel all over the world dancing, and that's exposed me to so many different cultures and so many different people that's really helped me in return grow as a person. Dancing to the Electric Horseman, here is Alabama's Junior Miss Katie Boyd. <laughs> for our last two finalists to perform their talent. I'm nervous and all I have to do is just stand here and introduce them. I can only imagine how they must be feeling backstage. Let's find out. Here's the first of our last two finalists, Arizona's junior miss, Adrian Embry. A kata is basically a dance-like set of self-defense techniques performed against the various imaginary attackers. For instance, I'll have an attacker coming in off my left side and I'll have to defend myself and then off the right and then I'll have to smash their skulls together and break their necks and so on and so forth. <laughs> and she is performing Kempo Martial Arts Kata to Action Set. Please welcome America, Arizona's Junior Miss, Adrian Embry.
contestant number eight, Utah's junior miss, Jessica Henderson. I've been dancing for 15 years. The music I will be performing to is composed by my uncle, Kurt Bester. I've grown up with his music my whole life, so it's a song that's very dear to my heart, and I'm so excited to perform to it. And she is performing modern dance to Stradivarius. Welcome, Utah's junior miss, Jessica Henderson. Henderson. You've now seen all eight finalists perform their talents, so now it's the judges' turn to go to work. While their scores are being tabulated, you can add up your own scores at home. And while you're busy picking your favorite, we're going to go backstage to where Tyrenda and Andrea are with some more winners who were chosen earlier in the week. That's right. We're here tonight with two of tonight's contestants who picked up scholarship awards earlier in the week. Rhode Island Junior Miss Erin Valenti will take home $1,000 with the Mobile Register Daily Journal Award. Erin, would you tell us a little bit about what you wrote in your journal? Um, I just wrote about some of the stuff that we've been doing for the past couple of weeks and about getting adjusted to Junior Miss. But I started off by talking about dreaming about Matt Damon. Well, that probably helps. Congratulations. And the Caligas Photo Scrapbook Award, along with $1,000, was won by Florida's Junior Miss Valerie Ann Lynch. Valerie, we know it's what's on the inside that counts, but tell us about the outside. The outside is a prop from our um, state program that was held in January. We use this, our theme was the circle of life. And talking about the inside counting, I also made a special pop-up page of all the special Florida Junior Miss people. Hey, that's wonderful. We'll be back with more from my town. Stay with us. To hear more from tonight's musical guest, My Town, and Andy Graves, log on to country.com and check out their albums. I hang down about here and throw out your Evo. Let's slip like that. <laughs> I live in Colorado, just a few hours away from a ski resort. Lived there all of my life, and I have never even attempted to ski. I can play piano with my nose. I was drafted by my high school coach to be a high school powerlifter. Usually before every big event that I go to, um, my parents will get me a jar of frosting and I will eat frosting plain just to get on a little sugar high, I guess. I love playing touch football. I color coordinate my underwear with the outfit that I'm going to wear that day. <laughs> Now, as we've already mentioned, it has been a pretty exhausting couple of weeks for these girls since they arrived here in Mobile. Well, all of that is over. So now, with the help of my town and our three former America's Junior Misses, all these girls who've still got any energy left are going to party all night. Come on, cause tonight is the night. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Jane Smith, live backstage at the 43rd Annual America's Junior Miss Program. The 50 contestants have now been narrowed down to eight finalists, and those eight finalists have just been judged on their talent and fitness. Now, they are also gifted. It's hard to choose just one, but alas, only one will be able to go home tonight with $50,000 in college scholarship money. Who is she? Stay tuned to Fox 10. We'll have a live interview tonight, right after the program. <laughs> you cannot say it in it's, it's, But once you initially go up and talk to them, they have to be intelligent enough right. to have a conversation and not just what kind of music do you like. Well, I have to like somebody that will accept me into his family and that they can be accepted into my family too. My biggest pet peeve is when they say, oh, I'm going to call. Five hours later, mm -hmm. they just like, call, yeah. they, they never don't. call. I don't want it to be serious all the time. I mean, you need somebody that can make you laugh and relax oh, yeah. and not be kind of stressed out. That's the humor is very big, yeah. I think the most important thing in a relationship is that it's 50-50 in every aspect of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get ready now for our eight finalists to take the stage for our poise competition, outfitted in their own gowns, complemented by shoes from Nina. Joining them is a young man who has just been named a spokesperson for the Family Violence Prevention. He is also one of Nashville's freshest new talents, singing his humongous country hit, She's More. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Griggs. I like blue eyes, but 
birds are green Not like the woman in my dream And her hair's not quite as long as I had planned Five foot three When we come back, our eight final contestants will be stranded on the stage. And by the end of the evening, only one will survive. Who will it be? We'll find out as America's Junior Miss 2000 continues. shows on television this summer is Survivor. And you could say that tonight's competition is a friendlier variation on that theme. Who's going to make it to become America's Junior Miss 2000? Our judges will tell us that very soon. But first, there is one more hurdle these eight finalists must overcome. Me. More than anything else, our winner as America's Junior Miss has to talk. She's not likely to perform that fitness routine. She probably won't wear a long gown very often, and it is highly unlikely she will ever be called upon to demonstrate her tap dancing or twirling prowess. However, she will talk, and she's going to be presenting ideas and meeting people, often in unexpected situations, which is why this next segment is so important. We've gathered our eight finalists here for an interview with me in the second part of our poise competition. Now, here's the way it works. I'm going to be asking each girl a question. She will have 45 seconds to answer. And at the end of 45 seconds, she'll hear this sound. And then we move to the next finalist. And we'll start with finalist number one, who is New Hampshire's junior miss, Judy Bluma. Judy, I know you've had occasion to work on a presidential campaign in the past. 
Do you think the candidates for the nation's highest office should be forced to reveal as much of their private life as some have? I do believe that they should be forced to reveal as much of their private life as um, some have. I believe that people in high positions should be held to high standards, and the President of the United States would definitely be a person in a high position. There is another argument that some people say by being so intrusive into personal lives of politicians, we have eliminated some of the best qualified people from political office. Well, I, I stand by what I say. I believe that people who are in those positions should live by the, by the values that we all want to live by um, and that we all would want to look up to and have our children look up to also. Great. That's New Hampshire's junior miss, Judy Bloomer. Our second contestant is Mississippi's junior miss, Christy Irons. Christy, your career goal is to become a jury psychologist. If you become a jury psychologist, how will you avoid, perhaps inadvertently, changing the outcome of a jury's verdict by selecting the jurors that you've helped pick? Well, first of all, I would always have the option to take or not take a case, but I would just have to trust in God to help me make that decision. But also, a jury consultant's job is not to pick someone who will vote the way you want to pick, vote the way you want to be voted. It's to pick a non-biased jury and to rule out all prejudiced jurors. Is there any possibility in which the selection of a jury could result in the prosecution or the conviction, rather, of an innocent person? Well, jurors are very important in a trial, and of course they make the decision. But they're, as citizens, they make qualified decisions on the information they're given, and we have to trust the citizens of America to make the right choice. Very good. That's Mississippi's junior miss, Christy Irons. Our next junior miss is from Maryland. Maryland's junior miss is Sarah Roth. Sarah, you are a ballet dancer, and so you know about the pressure to stay thin. Uh, excessive dieting, of course, has caused a lot of serious eating disorder problems in many young girls. And there's some people who say the magazines are part of the problem. Is there too much pressure to be thin in our society for young girls today? It really bothers me that the ideal woman is thin and blonde, usually. And I really don't think that it's um, necessary for teens to look up to the outer beauty. I believe that everyone from the inside should be, ju you should judge people by the way they are on the inside and not the way that they are on the outside. How would you counsel a girlfriend who you knew was excessively dieting? What would you say to her? I think people in that situation really need their self-esteem to be built up. They need to be told, you are beautiful. You are a beautiful person. And they need to just remember that, and I should teach it that to my friend in the best way that I can. All right. Maryland's junior miss, Sarah Roth. Our fourth finalist is Alabama's junior miss, Katie Boyd. Katie, you've said on your um, application that your favorite singing group is the Dixie Chicks. Yes, they ma have recently um, had a single out that actually celebrated uh, a man who was murdered after beating his wife. And then there's the whole controversy over rap lyrics, which sometimes promote violence against police officers. How do you comment on that? Well, first off, I'd like to say that I really enjoy the Dixie Chicks music, and I think they're wonderful, uh, talented young women who have so much going for them. And I hate that in society today, we feel like we have to add that violence then, have to add the murder, have, have to add the abuse to get ratings. And I almost think that that's what it is. And I wish that the people who are our role models, who are in the spotlight, who we see day in and day out, would realize that what they do, what they say, and the things they sing in their songs do affect the youth. And the more positive things we put into those songs, the more positive things we're going to get out. Should lyrics be censored, or should the artist self-censor? Or should we just leave it alone as a First Amendment issue? Well, I personally think they should be censored. Any movie you go to, you have to censor, so I think music should as well. Alabama's junior miss, Katie Boyd. Our next finalist is Wisconsin's junior miss, Allison Lauber. Allison, drug addiction is increasingly widespread, and I know you've been really active in the D.A.R.E. program. What, though, if someone kills a drug dealer? Should they be rewarded or punished? I feel that human life is a gift from God and that no person can take that away and be rewarded for it. 
I feel that so many people today look at drug dealers as horrible people that have absolutely no value. Every person has value. You need to look for it. If you look for the bad in a person, you will find it, but you need to focus on what's good. You've also said that music education is how you hope to make your career. How do you inspire a little child to love music the way you obviously do? Well, there's a lot of things that you can teach a child through music, and there's many different ways that you can express yourself through music. And I think just exposing the child to music will develop a love for it mm -hmm. by intuition and nature. That's Wisconsin's Junior Miss, Allison Lauber. <laughs> the microphone passes now to South Carolina's Junior Miss, Laura Bazart. Laura, you've said your career goal is to be a broadcast journalist. Yes, if you were asked to cover a war, how would you keep your emotions from getting in the way of the story? Well, that would be really tough because I'm a woman and we're all emotional. Um, but I think that we know that wars happen and if you're in a career such as broadcast journalism, you have to learn to separate yourself from the story and be able to do your job. And so I think that would be very important. As you probably also know, not all television and print reporters are held in high regard. How would you as a reporter improve the image that those of us on this side of the fence sometimes are having? Well, actually, I think one important thing is a lot of time, times reporters go a little too far in getting information on celebrities. We don't realize that they do have lives of their own. And I do think that that would be one important step because I know Diana's accident was something that resulted as from reporters going a little too far, and I think that's something that needs to change. South Carolina's Thank Junior you. Miss, Laura Bazaar. Thanks, Laura. Now we have Arizona's Junior Miss, Adrian Embry. Adrian, you are a role model. You are also an aspiring actress. Let's say you've gotten the part of a lifetime, and it calls for you to contradict your beliefs. Would you take the part? Well, there's always two sides to every issue, and if I was taking a part that would contradict uh, my beliefs, I would have to think about what this means to me, and this is my job, and this is my career, and if I want to do this, then I might have to compromise my principles. It would depend on the degree. If it was a large degree, then I'd have to stand up for my own principles and say no, because I think it's very important to keep your morals high in your lifestyle. What if you could star alongside Brad Pitt or Matt Damon? Well, that's a different story, you know. <laughs> Depends if they're single or not. <laughs> I think they are right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's Arizona's junior miss, Adrian Embry. Good job. And last but certainly not least is Utah's junior miss, Jessica Henderson. Jessica, you're active in an awful lot of sports and various charitable activities. What if a cigarette company offered to sponsor one of your events? Would you accept their donation? I think as any ath athletic people whether playing the sport or not, they know that donations are very important if they want their sport to succeed. But as far as alcohol or drugs, um, things that are not positive for the youth shouldn't be put in the public eye where all the athletes and all the, anyone watching athletics will see, oh, cigarettes, alcohol, that's who they're sponsoring. So they'll think, oh, maybe that has something to do with the athlete or why they're in this position. So I definitely would not accept a donation. What if it meant disappointing an awful lot of children who were counting on being there. I would definitely explain that if they, w they can be who they are just as good of a, as an athlete, not by going to this athletic competition or whatever it was going to be that was going to be sponsored and know that they don't need the drugs and we want to help stand up for our beliefs and not tell anyone else that they need the drugs either. All right. That's Utah's Junior Miss, Jessica Henderson. And there you have our eight finalists in the final round of competition. They are again New Hampshire's Junior Miss, Julie Bluma. Mississippi's Junior Miss, Christy Irons. Maryland's Junior Miss, Sarah Roth. Alabama's Junior Miss, Katie Boyd. Wisconsin's Junior Miss, Allison Lauber. South Carolina's Junior Miss, Laura Bazard. Arizona's Junior Miss, Adrian Embry. Utah's Junior Miss, Jessica Henderson. We are now down to the wire. Have you picked out a favorite? Are you having trouble deciding which one young woman you would vote for? Because remember, only one girl walks away with the title of America's Junior Miss 2000 and $50,000 in scholarship. We'll be back. Junior Miss helped me get the kind of education I wanted where I wanted. And what I loved about the pageant was, it wasn't a beauty pageant, it was a scholarship program, mm -hmm. it was a talent competition. It gave me a sense of possibility, enlarged 
my capacity to dream. To find out how America's Junior Miss can make a difference in your life, log on to our website at www.ajm.org. Designed by Dogwood Productions, it can help you on your way to be your best self. The judges' scores have been totaled and are an envelope heading my way, but while we wait for that envelope, here's some special awards from the preliminary categories of Scholastic Achievement, Talent, Poise, Fitness, and Spirit. And to help hound out these awards, please welcome America's Junior Miss 1974 and host of our preliminary competition, Karen Morris Gowdy. Good evening, everyone. I have the pleasure of announcing the last five awards chosen during the nights of preliminaries. For Mobile Gas, Payne Weber, the Scholastic Award, and $10,000 in scholarship money is shared by the junior misses from Mississippi, Texas, Rhode Island, and Virginia. To present the overall Scholastic winner with $10,000 in scholarship, here's Energy South VP of Corporate Development and Planning, Bill Coffin, and Senior VP of Investments from Payne Weber, Jeff Howard. And the overall Scholastic winner is Massachusetts Junior Miss Crystal Law. From Tyson Foods, the Preliminary Talent Award and $10,000 in scholarship money is shared by the junior misses from Florida, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and California. <laughs> Presenting the overall talent winner with $10,000 in scholarship money, here is the Senior VP of Corporate Marketing from Tyson Foods, Bob Corkazden. <laughs> and the overall winner of the talent award is... Alabama's Junior Miss, Katie Boyd! <laughs> the Preliminary Poise Award and $10,000 in scholarship money is presented by Terminex and shared by the Junior Misses from Maryland, South Dakota, South Carolina, and California. To present the overall poise winner with $10,000 in scholarship money, here is the Director of Marketing from Terminex International, Diane Johnson. <laughs> and the overall poise award goes to Mississippi's Junior Miss, Christian From Coca-Cola, the Preliminary Fitness Award and $10,000 in scholarship money is shared by the junior misses from Oklahoma, New Hampshire, South Dakota, and Alabama. Now here's Region Manager of Coca-Cola North America, Doug Coffett, to present the overall fitness winner with a $10,000 scholarship. And the overall fitness award goes to Utah's junior miss, Jessica Anderson. And finally, the America's Junior Miss Council Preliminary Spirit Award, which is chosen by all 50 of the girls in tonight's competition, sharing $3,000 in scholarship money, are the Junior Misses from North Dakota, Wisconsin, and Utah. And here's the president of America's Junior Miss Council and America's Junior Miss from 1975, Julie Forshee Thurber, to present the overall spirit winner with a $5,000 scholarship. And the overall spirit award goes to Washington's Junior Miss, Natalie Jordan.
Congratulations, everyone. The big award, however, is yet to come. So let's take one more look at our eight finalists. New Hampshire's Junior Miss, Julie Bluma, Mississippi's Junior Miss, Christy Irons, Maryland's Junior Miss, Sarah Roth, Alabama's Junior Miss, Katie Boyd, Wisconsin's Junior Miss, Allison Lauber, South Carolina's Junior Miss, Laura Bazaar, Arizona's Junior Miss, Adrian Emery, and Utah's Junior Miss, Jessica Henderson. In a moment, the winner of America's Junior Miss 2000. America's Junior Miss Badger is brought to you by HealthSouth, the healthcare company of the 21st century by the Economic Development Partnership of Alabama, and by Finesse. Welcome back, everyone, once again, America's Junior Miss for 1999, Sarah Jane Everman. quite a year. When you look back on the last 12 months, what stands out? What will you always remember? Uh, during this past year, I've had the opportunity to interact with people all across the country, and it's just been so neat to meet people from of all different ages and learn from them and gain wisdom from them. Well, you have been a tremendous representative for high school girls all around the country. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a fabulous year. Sarah Jane Everman, America's Junior Miss. 1999. And now it's that time. Um, you've got an envelope down there for me, I think, don't you? Thank you very much. All of these girls have done a fantastic job to get this far in the competition. And now it's with great anticipation that I announce to you who the second runner-up is. Presenting the second runner-up award is the president and CEO of Economic Development Partnership for Alabama, Jackie Shia. And the second runner-up, winner of $15,000 in scholarship money is Wisconsin's Junior Miss Allison Lauber. And now, the first runner-up, and here to present it, we have this gentleman right here, help me out, who do we got here? We've got, <laughs> he's gonna present $25,000 in scholarship money. And the winner of the first runner-up scholarship is Alabama's Junior Miss Katie Boy. around the country we are now down to six and one of them will be America's Junior Miss for 2000. Presenting the award is Health South's Chairman of the Board and CEO Richard Scrushy. I am pleased to announce that America's Junior Miss 2000 winner of a $50,000 scholarship is Utah's Junior Miss Jessica Henderson.
you entered Junior Miss, what did you think was going to happen? Maybe I'd win a couple of dollars for scholars. <laughs> dollars. Oh, this is, this is, wow. <laughs> this is, wow. This is a dream. Congratulations, Jessica Henderson, America's